This is the Atheist Reads Christian Literature. We're going to read Stick to Your Standards by Dr. Hugh Pyle. Not Gomer Pyle, Hugh Pyle. You can get these at Sword of the Lord. And of course, you can go to KingJamesBibleOnline.org if you want to um, see these verses yourself. Isaiah 62.10 Lift up a standard for the people. In this day of permissiveness, preachers and Christian workers are being bombarded with temptations to avoid legalism and to be, be not righteous. Over much Christian school principles are being chided for having rules and regulations. Guidelines are being dropped. Rules are being loosened. Folks are saying the Bible warns about worldliness and sin must not be taken too literally. Bible standards are not legalism. Are Bible standards legalism? Legalism is a doctrine of salvation by works. No, I do not know any fundamental Bible-believing preacher, preacher who uses thus who thus is a legalist. There are some people in religious circles who, as they did in Jesus' time, teach for doctrines, the commandments of men, Catholics, just kidding, but it is not wrong to have biblical standards, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard, Isaiah 59, 19, Bible standards are not legalism, preaching against sin or warning our people about the consequences of sin and compromise are a command from God, one writer wrote an article called an alternative to legalism, and I'm sure he's a good preacher and a sincere brother in the Lord, but he has declared that we have been confusing a whole generation of young people because we failed to deal with legalism courageously. Rather, we have confused a whole generation by failing to deal with sin courageously. He says that legalism is, dis is disastrous to personal Christianity, that we need to examine our system of values, which is harmful and does not work. Now, I agree that legalism would be harmful. That's good. Jesus said, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he is... He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved by uh, loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. John fourteen twenty one. And of course, there's talk about we all know that ten commandments given by God to Moses are not the only commandments in the Bible. Who are a few others? Matthew five sixteen. Let your light so shine before me. In Matthew twenty six. 41, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation, blah, 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 more, 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 and we're not going to do all of that stuff. Public schools once had standards and codes of morality, and there were rules. In those days, students were sent to the office for chewing gum, getting out of line in the halls, talking in class, and such matters. Then the rules were dropped, and permissiveness took over. Today, students in these same schools have to be dealt with about fondling in the halls, rape, pushing drugs, coming to school drunk, or committing murder. Really? Is this even true? Some of the really bad ones that are like in gang areas, you know, that certain politicians, you know, their answer to education is to pull funds for schools that are struggling instead of helping them. Maybe those. But really, how often are, is all this even true? I mean, come on. It has been suggested that fundamental preachers who preach against losing long hair on boys and modest girls dancing and rock music are neglecting such matters as confidence. Com covetousness, lying, hatred, and strife. This was certainly not true in my preaching when I was a pastor. I preached on the sins of the spirit as much as I preached on the sins of the flesh, positive or negative. I also preached on the fruits of the spirit, the happy potential of a Christian, the joys of the Christian life, and the victory we could readily have in Christ. Preachers, too lax. We have a generation of church members on our hands today who do not know what is right and wrong anymore. Preachers have been so lax and so soft for so long that sin is no longer black. In fact, it's hardly by Billy as gray anymore. Vance Havner has said that when all of God's sheep become dirty gray, the black sheep feel more comfortable. One crit our critics say that rules without reason rebuild, build rebellion. I'm not sure that would be true, but good scriptural rules and standards are not without reason. That's right. Do we need laws? The wise king wrote the law. The wise is the foundation of life. To depart from the snares of death. It is true that some young people who sat under my ministry did go the way of the world and are not living for God today. But cannot every preacher say that I do not believe they went astray because of sound Bible preaching and good biblical standards of the church and our school. Many other things entered into it. Into it. Some came from broken homes. Others had one parent who was spiritual and another was a soft compromiser. Others backslid because their parents did. Others were offended by weak Christians. A pastor can do only so much. Worldly and sarcastic people in the church often cause a young person to stumble. Another good reason why a pastor had better have good standards for his church leaders. The pastor cannot do it all, but he had better preach honestly against sin and be able one day to stand before God without the 
blood of these wayward people on his hands. Paul cried, we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom. Colossians 1.28. Ain't that sweet? I agree, you do need rules and laws, but come on. You do not want to get it from the Bible. I already made videos on it. Other people have made videos on it. You can go to Matt Delahanty, his channel, and many others. I don't need to go over it again. Preach positive. How much time have we done? Dang God. Looks like, luckily, this one we're going to get through too quick. And that is good. I love these quickies. Now we're told to preach positive sermons and leave off the standards. It was the liberals who first started that business. Then the new evangelicals. Liberals again. Of course, the extreme liberals are a nightmare. I'll give you that. The extreme liberals. They do not want... And conservatives too. It's their opinion or the highway. If you don't agree with them, they will, dis they will devour you. They'll ruin your reputation. They'll come after you. Look at Pie. Look at everybody else. They... They're, they're horrible, nasty people. Whether they're extreme left or extreme right. But you know, the extreme right, I mean, I'm sorry, the extreme left seems to be more violent and vile than the extreme right, from what I'm seeing. I mean, look at how they're protesting against this Donald Trump. I don't agree with Donald, everything Donald Trump. I didn't vote for him, never could. But look how they are behaving. So yeah, I agree with them about the extreme, the extreme, not the average liberal, but the extreme ones. The social justice warrior and the people in the media. Have you ever noticed if you watch a news a program and they're talking about, let's say Syria, for example. Okay, they're talking about Syria. You know, they're telling you this, 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 and this, 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 this. You go to another one, they're going to tell you the same thing. Or they're saying something about, you know, Obama, this, 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 or Trump, this, 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 this. You can go to two, three, or four other news stations and they all say the exact same thing. Lock, step. Think about that. Because they have no, they, they have no conscious, they, conscience. They don't care if they destroy somebody. They do not care. I made a video about that, in the, you know, it made Bible verses, you know, the media, uh, the Bible verse that nails the media, you know, the corrupt lying media and social justice warriors. I did that already. I mean, feel free to check it out if you want to. I mean, they are some nasty people. I mean, they will destroy you. They will lie. These college professors, you know, they, they hide behind the college walls. They think, and then you got these elitists in Hollywood. But, you know, then the conservative-minded denominational preachers decide that that was, was the popular route. Now, sadly, a lot of the independent men who built their Churches on hard preaching and Bible standards are letting down and going along the same road. I like how he does uh, liberals bad, conservatives good. No, both both of them have good ideas and bad ideas. If they learn to listen, shut the hell up and listen to the other side. I don't want anyone to get into all that. I already did say it in a bunch of other videos. And also my presidential video. Uh, we can go, how to go about it. First, make up your mind that you're going to obey God. Get Dr. Rice's little booklet, Why Preach Against Sin. I've already read that. That's another one of my atheist reads Christian literatures. Feel free to check it out because I go through his Why Preach Against Sin and read it several times. Second, remember that you are obligated under God to put up the warning sign where the bridge is out. The media, the public schools, and entertainment world are all doing all they can to ruin our young people. The media is too busy lying because they just want to make a buck. The media don't care who they ruin, who they destroy. They don't care. The media don't trust them. Again, I tell you what to do. I, you know, please watch that video I mentioned earlier. Okay, about the media. And I don't care if the alternative media. They're not any better. Just be skeptical. Don't believe everything they say. Remember that most likely they're exaggerating or they're just outright lying when it comes to the media. As, as the public schools, the parents are in control of the public schools. I used to be a teacher. Trust me, the parents do not want their kids to learn. They just want the kids to pass the next grade. If you teach martial arts to kids, which I would never do again, but if you do, one thing you'll notice is that the parents don't want their children to learn how to fight and defend themselves. Hell no. They want them to get the next belt. I just want my child to get the next belt. You're not letting him get his back. Been doing this for such a long time. But you will... yeah, because he can't throw a punch or a kick. He can't block a kick or a punch. He's going to get his butt kicked if he gets in a fight. I mean, dang. Um. 
So blaming public schools, teachers have no real control anymore. The administrators and the parents. And the parents, the parents do not want their children punished when they misbehave. Not all parents, okay. Most of them would not allow that anymore. There was a time where teachers could punish a child for misbehaving. Now that's not allowed. So don't we blame the entertainment world. You choose your own self what you watch and what you don't watch. You choose the music you want to listen to. You choose the videos you want to watch, the video games you want to play. It's your choice. Okay? I do get, I mean, I think a lot of us get sick of these actors giving us their opinion like their opinion matters. I don't mind them giving their opinion, but when they do it as if it's the most important, important thing like they are right I can't stand anybody that does that I know I'm not right about everything many parents do not give their children the warnings and the instructions they need you may be their only hope they love them and be genuinely interested in your people the shepherds should generally care for the sheep fourth don't expect unsaved people to understand and appreciate what you're trying to get across to the saints saints just basically someone who's saved but I like that how that and those of us, you know, unsaved, we're just horrible and nasty. We don't understand why they want to behave and conduct themselves right. Please. How many Christians behave and conduct themselves right? I mean, fifth, use your head and don't make big issues over silly little things that will straighten out under your preaching if you could just give the people time and blah, blah, blah. You know, girls look like a lady and all that stuff. She look like a lady. Remember that song, Errol Smith? Dude looks like a lady. I'm not going to go, but that's it with that. Bye-bye.